Law Warrior Online. BH-K305 Battlehawk Overview Defiance Industries was once considered the Innisphere's premier battle mech engineering and construction firm. When it found itself regularly outclassed and outproduced by the Free Worlds League, Defiance upscaled its Hesperus II facilities in a bold move. Among the new production lines added was one dedicated to building the new Battlehawk. Capabilities Many engineers and mech warriors initially questioned the quality of the Battlehawk's construction because of the haste that went into initiating its production. With heavy armour and pulse lasers, however, the Battlehawk has proven a forgiving ride for rookie mech warriors. Despite being relatively slow for a light mech design, the addition of recovered Star League-era defensive technology, specifically the MacArthur anti-missile system and ferrofibrous armour, ensure that the Battlehawk can survive many more hits. Like the Hatchet Man, the Battlehawk is equipped with a full head ejection system, making it popular with mech warriors assigned to hostile environments. Deployment Eager to demonstrate their creation and boost sales, Defiance Industries pressured the AFFC to deploy the prototype mech in combat. Two lances of Battlehawks were sent to the first Robinson Rangers, which was being redeployed for raiding missions into the clan occupation zone. During the first mission, Battlehawk losses were minimal, and reports of their performance encouraging. Unfortunately, the mission itself was a poorly executed disaster. Eager to deflect blame from his troops, the Rangers commander blamed the untested Battlehawk. Defiance Industries attempted to suppress the negative publicity from this incident, but to no avail. Battlehawks already ordered by the Federated Commonwealth were assigned to shore up garrison forces. Ironically, the Battlehawk proved itself in these postings. During the Fedcom Civil War, the rugged Battlehawk ensured the survival of many green mech warriors along the Alarian APM in the fighting on York. Their experience served them well in later heavy fighting on Tikhonov and Thorin. After hostilities ended, the LAAF drew heavily on this corps of veteran troops to rebuild more prestigious units. Elsewhere, the Kornitz PTM held on for three months against the Jade Falcon Galaxy by combining their expert knowledge of their homeworld with the Battlehawk's mobility and survivability. While the LAAF continues to show little interest in the Battlehawk, preferring to field heavy and assault mechs, its relatively low cost and solid track record for survivability have made it popular with mercenary commands. Variants Following an uncompromising start, Defiance Industries have revisited the design with an eye to enhance the Battlehawk's key selling points. By replacing the XL engine with a new light model, the BHK-306 version is even tougher. The heavier power plant required the replacement of the pulse lasers with ER models, doubling their effective range. The arm-mounted SRM streak system is upgraded to the latest 4-tube model from Hovertech. Notable Mech Warriors Hauptmann Klaus Davis The unassuming Hauptmann Davis looks better suited to the classroom than the cockpit of a battle mech. Indeed, he retired from the AFFC in 3047 to take up a career teaching history on his homeworld of Kornitz until the Jade Falcon's Rogue Galaxy invaded. Pulled out of retirement by his cousin, Colonel Conrad Davis, Klaus found himself back in uniform and in command of a misfit collection of troops loosely described by Conrad as a company. With their mercenary support quickly annihilated, Klaus used his intimate knowledge of the terrain and a few manoeuvres drawn from his dusty history data chips to repeatedly sting the invader for three months before the Cornet's PTM was ultimately forced to withdraw. Mech warrior Yana Gilmore When a few surviving members of the Knights of St. Cameron reappeared in 3053, Yana was one of many to answer Mortimer Dewey's call for suitable recruits. Though short on experience, she worked her way across the Innisphere to reach the Knight's encampment. Colonel Dewey immediately accepted her into the unit, and provided her with a Battlehawk from the Knight's seemingly inexhaustible supply of equipment. Like the Knights of St. Cameron themselves, few would recognise Yana Gilmore now. Even seen as an outstanding mech warrior, she and the rest of the Knights have stunned observers. Once viewed as little more than a joke, the resurrected Knights handily dealt with the 4th Davian Guard's RCT on Fort Loudon. Ah, back to TRO 3055 upgrade, yeah! 
this is not one of the most fondly remembered TROs, to be honest. Oh, I mean, if you're wondering what the PTM was, it's a Pandora Theatre Militia. But, uh, yeah, anything with TM, Theatre Militia. So uh, I think the ATM is the Alarion one. But uh, yeah, the Battlehawk, BK, or BHK305, 30 tons, AMS system, with uh, Streak 2 and 3 medium pulse lasers, and a trio of jump jets. Not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, it's got a pretty decent armor value across the board as well. Um, armor factor of 99, not bad spread, considering. And uh, at least the art is an improvement over the original, which you'll obviously see the original with the updated TRO3055 upgrade art. The main problem I always found with TRO 3055, honestly, was the fact that it's not really the most memorable. I think 60-70% to 70 of what makes a mech desirable for a player is the look of the mech. And if it doesn't look good, it doesn't matter if it's got the best armor, weapon, setup, and uh, agility. It, it just If it doesn't look cool, no, no one's going to bother with it. Um... I like the artwork version in this one, though, with, of the Battlehawk. It's a big improvement over the original art. Uh, I like the fact that it's also got the markings on it for it being uh, a test unit, so you can tell this is on a firing uh, range for, for a test combat, <coughs> showing you the different areas where they expect it to uh, to be hit and marked and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Uh, also, it's map blogs art, so it's got a bit of motion to it, at least, at least for the majority of it, so uh, the mech doesn't look quite as naff as it did in the original. I think one of the problems with TRO3055 is that although a lot of the mechs in it have some interesting backgrounds, uh, definitely in a, a later period in the in the Innisphere's history after the clan invasion, it misses a lot of those kind of interesting visual beats. Obviously you had the tarantula originally, which is which is cool, and the, the dart and the fireball look great um, as redesigns, but then as you start going through the list it's like, hmm, yeah, not, not as many memorable designs in the but uh, we'll get through them, because although they look a bit funky, they've got some interesting write-ups, especially something like the Jackal. That's a funny-looking mech, trust me. It's definitely not one of the ones you'd pick first off. But, uh, yeah, Battlehawk's pretty decent. So, um, yeah, I hope you like that. It's it's nice to be back to uh, to the standard boring old Law Warrior setup. So, uh, have a good one, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>